Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Or if it's your first time watching, welcome. Make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already, and make sure to turn on those post notifications so you can be notified every time I make a new upload. I typically upload every Tuesdays and Thursdays, but it varies. I have a life. So in today's video, I'm going to be doing a review and wear test of the, the new Vanish Seamless Finish Liquid Foundation. It retails for $56. It comes in 32 different shades. It is a highly concentrated liquid foundation designed to deliver instant full coverage with just half a pump no primer needed it is a full coverage natural finish liquid formulation it is great for normal combination and oily skin free of parabens. this also is vegan and cruelty free it applies like a second skin creating a smooth and flawless complexion light reflecting micro spheres blur and create a soft focus finish it is non comedogenic formula is waterproof transfer proof and sweat proof so I'm really excited to do this review on camera for you guys because I've actually been using this foundation for a couple weeks now. I actually bought it right before I visited my family in Texas and you will see in the video that the color is a little off for me. I ended up picking up the shade Nude. What happened was I bought it, I went to Texas, it's so much more humid over there. It ended up being my color. Come back to LA where it's not humid at all, it's actually dry and the foundation doesn't oxidize here basically is what I'm trying to say. Anyway, I'm really excited to try this foundation on camera for you guys. So without wasting any more time, let's just go ahead and get started. Hey guys, and welcome to the demo portion of this video. So I've already done the upper portion of my face just because that's really hard to do on camera with my hair in the way. This is not a first impression, so I figured it didn't really matter. As far as first impressions, I've been using this foundation since maybe before I went to Texas about a month ago. When I actually bought this foundation at the store, I was in between two different shades that were not even right next to each other. The two shades that I was in between was nude and warm beige. However, when I put one on one side and one on the other, I actually asked a friend it, which side was better and she said like she liked this color better because the other one was too it was like a weird undertone for me like it was a warmer undertone I ended up with the shade nude which is for light medium neutral undertones I do have a neutral undertone but I do tend to be more on the yellow side of that I do have some peachy tones to my skin because this is such a full coverage foundation and it has so much pigment in the formulation it's really hard to kind of to find a cover a color that matches you exactly kind of how the Marc Jacobs remarkable foundation is that it's so full coverage that it's hard to kind of find a match that's exact to your skin tone there's just not a skin tone for everyone because it's so pigmented so what you get is the true depth of the undertone before I even get started I'm gonna go ahead and prime with the mineral veil primer this used to be one of my favorite primers and if you guys don't know this primer actually makes anything you put on top of it waterproof. And I know that the foundation is marketed as not, like you don't have to use primer to use it, but guys, let's be honest, like I know you guys, if y'all are here, y'all probably watched like all of the big influencers videos and so did I, and every one of them that didn't use a primer, the foundation looks so bad. So I'm just gonna keep myself from doing that. And because I've already worn the foundation, I know that you definitely need primer. So I'm already gonna tell you that right off the bat. And honestly, if you're using makeup and you're not wearing a primer, shame on you. You know why? Because think of primer as a protective barrier between your pores and the makeup. So if you're not using a primer, that means your skin is just eating it up. And that's not to say that primer is not going to make, like your skin's not going to eat the primer, but at least it's eating the primer and not like the pigment and the makeup and the bronzer and the, you know, the stuff that's actually going to clog your pores. So just FYI, keep that in mind. Okay, so as usual, I'm going to do half of my face with the beauty blender, half of my face with the makeup brush. I am using the Jeffree Star brush. I did wash this like five days ago. I'm a cute continue to say that because I honestly did but I do my makeup every day this gets dirty I'm not gonna clean it every day I'm gonna clean it once a week let's be honest taking the vanish seamless finish liquid foundation I'm just gonna take a pump on the back of my hand and I have to say you guys this foundation is really tricky it's one of those foundations that dries really really fast because it's such a matte formulation that you have to work fairly quickly so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start dotting it on my face so after I dotted it on my face I went ahead and applied it and started tapping it into place I find that that is the easiest way to kind of spread the foundation before going in with the beauty blender. So I'm going to take the beauty blender and just press it into the skin. 
So I applied that using the Beauty Blender on the right side of my face. On the left side of my face, I am going to take a brush. I am very aware that the color is lighter. I will say that when I bought the foundation, I was going to Texas. And so when I first initially used it, I used it while I was in Texas. And because of the humidity and just the weather is so much differently in Texas, the foundation oxidized on me in Texas because of the humidity. So it was like exactly my color. So coming back to LA where it's dry, the foundation is obviously light. It's fine. I'm going to take a pump on the back of my hand. Gonna tap it on with my fingertips and just spread it out. This is honestly the easiest way to apply this and get a seamless coverage because if you go straight from your hand to the brush instead of your fingers, your fingers aren't gonna warm up the product and it's gonna be very messy. I'm just gonna take the brush and just start buffing it in. So that was one layer and one layer of foundation on both sides. I have to say, looking at myself in the mirror, they both actually look really good. The brush definitely gave me a lot more coverage than the Beauty Blender side because with the Beauty Blender side, I am still seeing some of my acne scars coming through. Nothing crazy, but it definitely sheared it out just a little bit. It's still full coverage, don't get me wrong, but it's not as extreme of a coverage as the brush side. With this foundation specifically, the brush side wins. And then that's a shocker because normally I like the Beauty Blender side a lot more. So I'm just gonna take half a pump and I'm just gonna gonna place that on my cheeks where I need a little bit more coverage especially packing a little bit more on the beauty blender side just because that side needed a little bit more coverage So looking at the flash photograph, the foundation looks really good. The undertone is a little off, not going to lie. It is looking a little light and a little too yellow for me. It looks really good. And with that being said, I can only imagine had I gotten a warm tone, how yellow it would have looked. Because even the neutral tone is looking yellow on me. But overall, looking at the picture, the foundation looks really good. It covered everything up. It looks very even. A lot of people like Tati, I specifically watched her video. She was having a lot of problems in her nose area. Like it was just starting to like separate. I don't remember if she used a primer or not but it looks really good around my nostrils that's the place that I was mostly concerned with to be honest guys when I have used this foundation in the past and for whatever reason it's working out on camera today I guess I'm having a good skincare day too but just being honest with you guys and very transparent when I've used this foundation in the past I did notice that I would have a lot of problem right in my eye area like for whatever reason right in this area like right next to the nose it would just separate around the pores and a lot of times the foundation looked great everywhere else except that area so I would have to go in with our makeup forever HD concealer and just place a little bit in that area and it would just smoothen everything out and it would just like be amazing and I don't know if it's maybe because the foundation is so drying that it would separate in that area and maybe that I'm naturally a little dry in that area so I don't know exactly what was going on but it was just causing me so much stress so I'm just gonna take a little bit of my concealer and I'm just gonna place some right in the inner corner I'm not gonna go too crazy and then a little bit on the nose Okay, I definitely needed some concealer. Next, I'm actually going to take the Hourglass Veil Translucent Setting Powder. This is one of my favorite powders because it is talc-free. So I'm just going to take my Marc Jacobs The Face One Brush. I'm going to take some of that, tap off the excess, and I'm just going to very lightly set the foundation. So now I'm just going to take a flash photo of my face after I've powdered. Let's see how this baby looks like after you powder. It looks really good. It looks full coverage. Everything looks smooth and out. It looks amazing. I'm gonna go ahead and finish the rest of my face real quick and I'll be right back to check back in with So far the foundation is looking really amazing. It looks really good on the skin. It just glided on. It is full coverage. I will say that the undertone is a little yellow even though it's a neutral undertone. But I am starting to notice that in person it is starting to oxidize just a little bit. So just keep that in mind. It is 4.56 in the afternoon and I will be back in a couple hours to see how the foundation is wearing throughout the day. So just keep on watching. Hey guys, so it's now 11 p.m. at night. It's been about six hours since I initially put on the foundation. Overall, the foundation is wearing really well. It's not starting to separate anywhere. However, it is starting to dry out my skin right underneath my lip in my chin area, right in here. Earlier in the video, I talked about how it normally clings to my dry patches right around my nose. I don't... I, I guess I don't have any today, but I do have my below my lip. And so it clung to that and it just looked, it looked not cute, guys. Everything else looks fine. I am starting to get oily though, so I am gonna touch up. So I'm just gonna go into the finishing powder from Cover Effects.
Overall, the foundation still looks really well. I will say that my bronzer did definitely start to fade. I did lightly bronze, though, so I wasn't expecting that to last, per se, but that is fairly noticeable that it did start to fade. As far as longevity, this foundation wears amazingly. Is it catered to dry skin, though? No, absolutely not. If you're dry skin, I would not recommend this foundation. In fact, I love the finish of it. And I love the coverage. I feel like if, I, if my skin was still oily before Accutane, I would really appreciate this foundation because it looks beautiful. It just looks natural compared to other foundations that I have used. It just looks really nice on the skin. However, is it doing well with my skin? Yes, except it's just clinging to this dry patch. So that's going to be like a uh, uh for me because I, I can't. Yeah, and even if like I touch that area, it's all like, it's rough. Overall, I think this is a great foundation if you're oily or combination skin. If you're dry skin, I would definitely stay away from this foundation. This is not the one for you. I mean, you can make it work if you're dry. I mean, I'm pretty combo dry and I've made it work. Honestly, it's just too much hassle, guys. Like, I just feel like a foundation should just work for your skin. And I'm not saying that I'm saying this foundation is bad because I'm not saying that. I think that if you're oily or if you're combo, you're going to love this. However, if you're on the drier side, this is a no-go. The coverage is phenomenal. I, like, hands down, obsessed with the coverage. If we could just get this coverage in, like, a more hydrating formula, I would be obsessed. Anyway, but I'm not going to ramble on that. Is this foundation... Like, do I approve of it? If you're oily in combination, yes. If you're on the drier side, no. Will I be personally keeping it? Honestly, yes, I probably, because I, I still have the receipt, guys. I could totally return this. I'm probably going to keep this because the packaging is so fucking bomb. You know, eventually I'm going to get off Accutane. I feel like this is the foundation that I'm going to be reaching for because it just looks so beautiful on the skin. Unfortunately, with my dry skin right now, I just, I can't appreciate it or like it. I don't love it. So this is going to be a no for me. But if you're oily, if you're combo, this is the foundation for you. And I definitely think you should try it out. But yeah, that basically concludes today's video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys learned something from this, took something from this. Uh, definitely check this out. Get yourself a sample before you buy it, though, especially if you're combo dry. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up. If you watch this video all the way to the very end, leave a panda emoji down below. And until next time, guys, you got panda out.